Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today is Vlogmas Day 20. Goodness, this month is just going by so fast. It's almost Christmas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and uh, today I decided I am going to make a separate video talking a little bit about what I may or may not decide to do in regards to my being genderqueer. Um, and I know I've touched on this in bits and pieces in different videos uh, as the topic arose and as I went off on different tangents and things, but I thought for people who are more interested in specifically um, the gender queer part of my personality that I would just kind of make a single video about that. So, um, one of the things I've mentioned before is I'm not sure entirely if I would transition or not. I mean, I am 46 now and I've only just kind of come out, not just to the world, but to kind of to myself in terms of being genderqueer and being bigender and the fact that I'm more than just a tomboy. Uh, for, for many, many, many years, I just kind of identified as a tomboy mainly because that was the vocabulary I was familiar with and that's what a lot of this, you know, and, and being a tomboy is a, is a very common thing among women. Um, I mean, it's not all women, obviously. There's, a, there's many women out there that are, are very feminine and like being feminine, doing their hair and makeup and everything else. But I would say there's a, a, a significant enough percentage of cisgendered women, uh, women who are born biologically female and identify as female, but are still very tomboyish. And that's kind of where I was for a long time because, uh, and I've, I've told the story before of when I was uh, a very young child, I said, I'm a boy. I insisted I was a boy. I was like four or five years old, three years old. And I kept saying I was a boy. I preferred um, buying my clothes in the boys department uh, when we did go shopping at the department store and picking up boys' clothes from uh, the thrift stores and that kind of thing. But, um, and I liked wearing my hair short. My grandmother actually kept my hair short as a child um, for a couple of reasons. One, it was just easier to comb because I have, my hair tangles like crazy. It's, 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 it's that kind of, it's not super, super fine, but it's not thick either. It's just kind of in that weird in-between thickness and to the point where it just, clumps and tangles and things, so it's just easier to keep it short. And the second reason is because my grandmother was just ridiculously paranoid about me ever becoming um, a victim of, of abuse or being kidnapped and sold to sex traffickers. I, I, I don't know why she was that obsessed with, with being afraid of that happening to me. I don't know if that ever happened to anyone she knew. Um, I know it didn't happen um, to my mom or anything like that. Uh, I don't think it happened to her, but it might have happened to someone my grandmother knew. I know the the problem tends to be a little bit more rampant in Europe just because of the fact that they, there's no oceans between Europe and where a lot of the sex trafficking happens in uh, various parts of Asia. Uh, not all of Asia, but there are, there are pockets in Asia where there are is quite a bit of sex trafficking and it's my understanding that that uh, little European girls tend to be uh, favored in some of those areas at least that's the popular belief and or stereotype um, how much truth there is behind that I couldn't say um, I do know that one of the last times I was in Germany there was a huge news story about um, five little girls disappearing ki being kidnapped um, just vanishing overnight and the big speculation was whether or not they were grabbed by sex traffickers. So, you know, while it, there is a stereotype behind it, I think there is a, at least some grain of truth behind that as being a problem. And obviously it's not just a modern problem, I think it's a problem that's existed for a long time and hence where my grandmother's fear would have come from. You know, although in, in the US I don't think it happens as often. Not saying it doesn't happen at all, but I'm, I'm, don't think it happens as often here. And obviously, kids get grabbed and kidnapped and molested and all sorts of horrible things in this country. But uh, regardless, I don't think it, it, it it's as prevalent, uh, and therefore my grandmother's fear was probably a little bit more unfounded. But you know, I was a small child, and and it doesn't mean that I couldn't have been grabbed. And I, you know, in in my Me Too 
uh, video, I, I did mention a couple of incidents where I, you know, something could have happened and thankfully didn't. My grandmother's paranoia came in handy a couple of times there. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but going back to that age when I was a really little child and the fact that on one hand my grandmother kind of encouraged me to look a little bit more masculine. Um, she was fine with me wearing pants and dresses, cutting my hair really short and things. And if I remember right, I'll put a, a photo up here of, of me when I was about three or four years old. And you could see how much of a boy um, I looked like with my really short hair and everything. And so, because externally I thought I looked like a boy, I was like, oh, that must be a boy. But, I mean, that was part of it but there was a, a, a deeper sense of, I just, when I interacted with other children my age, I related to the boys. Um, I got along with them better, I could talk to them. There was just sort of this innate, like, yeah, I'm one, I'm, I'm one of you guys. When I interacted with girls, there was a discord there. I didn't um, fit in with them. Um, I didn't understand why they liked the things they did and, and just it was just a huge disconnect between myself and other female children whereas with me and male children it was like you know hey I'm just I'm just one of the guys and that's that's part of what led me to say no I'm I am a boy you know why won't you let me play with boys toys and things my grandmother that was the thing is she would let me look like a boy but she wouldn't let me play with boys toys she insisted on giving me Barbies and things instead of letting me play with cars and, and, and things of that nature. In fact, she didn't buy me a, um, a Hot Wheels, I wanted Hot Wheels and cars. She bought me a Hot Wheels car for my 16th birthday. Ha ha. It, it was a joke. I mean, she did, it, it was obviously a joke. One, because she remembered how much I wanted a Hot Wheels car when I was little. And two, because I was 16 and she couldn't afford to buy me a real car. So she's like, here. <laughs> We had a good laugh over that. We really did. It was it was fun. It was hilarious. Um, it, my grandmother and I, at the very least, we had a very similar sense of humor, and so I was able to get the joke, and I wasn't mad at her for it. But um, it wasn't until I finally saw what a naked boy looked like. Uh, I I accidentally walked in on a a, a boy from my kindergarten class. Um, he was over at my house, uh, he and, and several others were over at my house um, playing uh, on a weekend and I walked in on him going to the bathroom. That's when I realized, at least from a physical standpoint, oh, I'm not a boy. At least in that sense. Like, I didn't have boy genitalia. And I was like, okay, I still feel like I'm a boy, but I guess I'm not because I don't have the body for it. And so I just kind of like, I still kept wanting to wear boys clothes and keep my hair short and that kind of thing. And I did for a very long time. I don't think I grew my hair long until I was in college. Um, if I remember correctly, I think my, my hair was short all the way through high school. And then I was in college and I was like, well, I was, you know, one, I was just really busy and I didn't have a lot of money and I was spending, I, I was working three jobs, uh, three part-time jobs, trying to get myself through college. Um, I was thankfully, because because my family was so impoverished, I ended up getting state and federal grants to help me pay for most of the tuition and books, but I still had to have transportation to and from school because I couldn't live on campus. There was, grants didn't pay for campus and I couldn't afford that, so I, I stayed with my grandmother. But, you know, transportation, food, I, I had to help my grandmother put food on the table because she wasn't earning enough. She was making, from her social security, 500 a month. And between the two of us, we couldn't survive on just that. So I needed to work um, to put food on the table, to help with rent, uh, to help with utilities, etc. Because uh, she had, she was, you know, she was in her 80s at this point and she had medical bills and everything else. And Medicare only covers so much. So, you know, I, I worked. <laughs> I worked and, and, and things, and so I just kind of grew my hair out. And it wasn't a, I'm growing my hair out because I want to feel more girly. It was just, you know, A, I couldn't afford to go to the salon to get my hair cut, and B, um, it was college and I was just like trying something new. 
And when I grew it out, one of the things I, the, the, the number one reason I actually liked it long when I did have it long, because I, overall I generally hate my hair long because A, I still have the um, tangle problem and B, it just, you know, it's just so much to fuss with and everything and it just bugs me. But I remember when it was long, when it brushed past my shoulders, I liked the way it felt on my shoulders. So it, it had nothing to do with me wanting to feel pretty or be girly or anything. It was just like, hey, this kind of feels good on my back. <laughs> and because I don't like messing with my hair, I 99% of the time I do what, like any guy who grows his hair out, what do they do if, you know, most of the time if, if guys have really long hair, they don't usually leave it hanging loose. What do they do? They throw it in a ponytail. <laughs> I mean, a lot of loose for if they're going on a date or, or wanting to look nice or something, but most of the time they keep it in a ponytail. I have several friends of mine um, who are who are men who who wear their hair well past their shoulders. Uh, one is like middle of his back is really long, and most of the time, um, you know, he, he he's I'd say because he has really fine hair as well that he tends to leave it long and just leave it leave it hanging and it's fine. But if it gets in the way, he throws it into a ponytail, and that's usually how I wore my hair was throwing it into a ponytail. So, and eventually I would get sick and tired of it and just chop it all off. And uh, when I get into relationships very often, you know, my male partners will say, oh, I just really like it when, when, when you have longer hair. So I'm like, okay, fine. And I would, I kind of found a happy medium with most of my ex-boyfriends and with my husband where I wouldn't necessarily wear it very long. I mean, sometimes I did. Um, I, I tend to ha have it somewhere, you know, um, about mid, middle of the neck or something so it looked kind of feminine still but wasn't super long um but most of the time it's like i really do prefer my hair to be this short and all of a sudden i'm just going on and on about hair aren't i <laughs> um anyway with with all of that being said uh so yes yeah, so i have something deeper in me besides just feeling like a boy but Again, I have said this before, I'm not fully transgender. I'm, I'm halfway in between by, uh, sorry, cisgender and transgender, and, and, and I, I use the term bigender. And so while I physically present as female right now, um, I, I still also try to present as male with the shorter hair, with wearing more masculine clothes, with binding my breasts, um, and I don't burn my breasts every day, but I, I have been a little bit more lately. But you know, so so there's so there's things of that nature where I am trying to present myself as more masculine, and in a way that might be some seen as somewhat butch and or tomboyish. But there's a there's a deeper thing there where I would actually like to look and sound and be more male. I've been female or, 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 or trying to f squeeze myself into the female um, role s for so long and to the point where when, whenever I would be like, and this would happen online if they couldn't see a, a picture of me and I was using my username and stuff, uh, people would call me uh, male. And I'm like, oh no, no, I'm, 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 I'm female, I'm a she, I'm a her, whatever. Uh, I had that societal thing so ingrained in me that I had to correct people uh, of, of, of what my gender is. And it didn't occur to me to just kind of go with it and like, yeah, yeah, I'm a boy, whatever. It just, it just, and, and so coming to the realization that I could present myself as, as male and I could identify as male is something that's a very recent thing. Um, I think, you know, just because of the longest time, if you have breasts and a vagina, you're, 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 you're female and therefore you, you have to conform with being female. And that was just so ingrained in me for so long that it never occurred to me that I could ever be either or or both. And um, just learning about Trans, uh, being transgender and bigender and genderqueer and all these things and watching a lot of videos of people who have, I mean, they're, they're, they're you know, younger people who are going through this in their teens and 20s 
and having all, so many of the options open now that weren't options available for when I was younger um, and, and things. And so a part of me is like, you know what, I would like to experience life as the other gender to a degree. Um, like I said, there are like I, I present a lot of myself in, in masculine ways in terms of how I dress, how I wear my hair, that kind of thing. But if I did transition, so I start taking testosterone, that kind of thing, and I'd start having a more masculine voice, um, I'd probably develop somewhat more masculine features in my face. That you know, I may you know, I would I would have facial hair, although um, whether or not I would keep the facial hair, I could always shave it, um, that kind of thing. Um, but there would still be this whole duality of my gender where I would still present myself in some feminine ways, like, for example, my fingernails. Um, and they're all sparkly purple now, this time, so I, I, I got them just done the other day. And I would keep wearing nail polish even if I transitioned because I like having my nails done. And so I'm like, you know what? I I would then look more masculine, but I would be considered, probably I would be viewed as a more effeminate male rather than a more masculine female. Mainly because, again, I have this duality in my nature, this being bi-gender and, and, and having these, these two sides of myself. And while, you know, I've been like this masculine female for so long, I'm like, you know what, maybe maybe being a more effeminate male would be interesting. Um, obviously, if I'm to transition, then, you know, I'm, I'm gonna transition and I'm gonna, you know, um, it, you can, and, and some people do change their minds and detransition for many personal reasons, and and and, and everyone's reason is their own. It's, it's your body, you kind of have to, know what you're most comfortable with. And, and it's fine if, if that's a choice that, that people make. But I think that if I went down that road, um, I, mean, I could always stop taking testosterone and some, some things would reverse, but it's my understanding that if you're on testosterone long enough, that there are certain changes that would not reverse back. And so I would probably have uh, a deeper voice and, and, and certain, certain um, feature changes and things that would not go away. Um, even if I stopped taking the testosterone. But um, I would want to have at least a few surgeries as well. I've decided, um, I definitely, I, to be perfectly honest, I really would like to do this re regardless of transition, is to have a mastectomy. Um, I have, and I've mentioned this before, a lot of problems with my breasts. I've um, had fibroids forever. I have fluid-filled cysts. Every time I have a mammogram, I end up having to have follow-up exams because I have so many lumps in there that no one can tell if they're cancerous or not. And thankfully, everything's always come back as benign and things. And thankfully, I've managed to avoid biopsies so far. They've managed to just do ultrasounds and, and determine um, things. But it's just, it's a constant cause of stress for me. Um, and, and, and they're always sore and tender, regardless of if I'm binding or not. I, even if I'm not binding, I, I, I've, I don't like them being touched and, and just, I just don't like them. <laughs> and, and, and part of that is probably the fact that I'm bigender and the fact that I just, like, I, I, I have no interest in having these lumps of flesh on my chest. And so, and, and, and with the medical issues on top of that and the concern of one of these lumps eventually becoming cancerous and everything else, I'm like, you know what? I think I have a good medical case to just get them removed and not have to worry about all of that. And I wouldn't, you know, and, and because, I, because of the fact that I am bigender and I would like to at least partially transition um, I wouldn't want to do any kind of reconstructive surgery. Um, a lot of women who preemptively have their, their breasts removed in order to uh, avoid um, cancer usually will have reconstructive surgery done, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't need to. 
um, having a flat chest would actually be kind of my goal uh, with all of that. But with having a medical reason behind wanting to get that done in the first place. So there's that. Um, and I, th I do think I really want to go on testosterone. I'm getting really close to menopause at this point. Uh, like I said, I'm 46. Um, and so, and I, I've been fighting my doctors for years over having a hysterectomy. Um, and I've had, and, and people keep saying, well, get a second opinion. I've gotten third and fourth and fifth and sixth opinions. And everyone keeps telling me to not um, go through with a uh, hysterectomy and a surgical menopause uh, because of this, that, and the other and everything else. And, you know, I'm just done fighting it at this point. I mean, I, th I, th I think the only way I will ever get a hysterectomy is if I did develop some kind of a cancer and then all of a sudden be like, oh, okay, we'll just take everything out now. <laughs> like, whatever. Um, it's not like I'm using any of it, but, um, you know, and, and, and part, of the, part of the argument is that the insurance just isn't gonna cover it because they don't want to. Um, it's 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 such a it's it's just a, a huge problem and I'm just like you know I'm just I'm kind of done with that so I mean if I could get a hysterectomy I would I would opt to but um, I'm I'm done trying to fight for for one um, and then the other the only other surgery left would be uh, with the genitalia and well there's there's two kinds that you can that you can have which are called bottom surgeries uh, one is phalloplasty where you actually get an actual penis built from a patch of other skin on your on your body, usually um, a, a, a piece um, cut from your arm. But I think there's other other sections of skin that could be used uh, in order to construct a penis and then construct a scrotum. And basically, because that kind of a penis can't become erect on its own, um, they'll actually build a little pump inside the scrotum, and you just pump your balls to get it erect. Like, yeah, okay, fine. Um, one, I would n I'm never gonna date a woman. Um, I'm not attracted to women. I'm only gonna be dating men. And two, I'm a bottom and I don't wanna penetrate someone. <laughs> so, phalloplasty, uh, considering everything involved in it, like, doesn't appeal to me at all. I have no interest. See, that's one of the things is like, I really don't care if I have you know, a, 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 a penis or not, um, to be perfectly honest. Now, I know the second option, it's called metoidioplasty, and it works with your clitoris instead. And because the clitoris actually literally is the female penis, um, since male, uh, uh, male and female, um, when we start off in the womb, um, before um, our chromosomes kick in and, and kind of rearrange our, our bits uh, based off of our chromosomes and everything else. Uh, we both start off biologically, physically with the exact same parts. And then it's based on the chromosomes whether or not um, one part becomes a clitoris uh, if you're XX and if you're XY it becomes a penis. But it's literally the same tissue. Um, it starts off as the same tissue and then based on the instructions from the chromosomes, they form different things. Same thing, ovaries uh, on one hand, um, testes on the other hand. Uh, same tissue, just developing different functions based on, based on your biological sex. And so when you start taking testosterone, your body's like, oh, okay, um, I need to start forming a penis now. <laughs> <laughs> and so your clitoris starts growing and everything, and, and it, it, it can actually become a micropenis. And then metroidioplasty just kind of helps enhance that and, and make it large, slightly larger. It, you still end up with a micropenis. It's never going to be a full-sized penis. Um, I, I doubt that there's uh, ever been a case of a transgender uh, person who's developed a full-sized penis from their clitoris. Uh, without phalloplasty or something to go with it, but so there's so there's that option, and then they can actually reroute um, the urethra so that you could actually pee through it as well and everything else. the The thing though is that I've seen enough videos where people have had complications with either of the surgeries and um, and things, and I'm like, you know, I don't know if I want to deal with all that. Um, 
once you have your breast removed, they're gone. It's done. It's 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 yes, the, it's it's a surgery, and therefore there's always surgical complications. But once they're gone, they're gone. Um, versus trying to reroute certain things <laughs> in your genitalia, where you can have like if everything, even if everything goes perfectly wonderful during the surgery, there can be complications that can pop up weeks, months, or even years later. And it's like, you know, I just, I don't know if I want to deal with any of that. And so there's, so there's that thinking. But then the other thinking I've had is, well, if I go through this transition um, and, and become more masculine in certain ways, but remain more feminine in other ways, it would further exemplify my, my duality of gender, my being by gender, and, and make me a little bit more both male and female um, than I am now. And rather than just expressing it through clothing and that kind of thing, I, I could express the maleness in some physical ways while still retaining certain female attributes as well. Um, now, I, one thing people, some people have asked me is like, well, wouldn't that turn off any potential partners? You know, because, you know, how many people are going to be attracted to you if they know that you're, you know, not one complete gender or the other, if you're a mix of both? And I'm like, you know what, I don't, don't care. <laughs> I think a big part of the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm starting to go down this path is because I don't have my husband around. Now, now on one hand, um, it is something that he and I have ta had talked about quite a bit in terms of being curious about changing gender. Um, and he was bisexual and he was attracted to both men and women, women more than men. And so I honestly think he would support me going down um, a transition path the way I'm thinking of doing it right now, where I would still retain my female, biological female genitalia, um, but remove my breasts, maybe get a hysterectomy and take tes testosterone so I would sound and, and look a little bit more masculine. So I think he would, he would have supported that um, just fine as long as I remained female in terms of my, my genitalia. And I, to be perfectly honest, because I don't have a dysphoria with my genitalia, I don't have a problem keeping it. Therefore, I don't have a problem, um, you know, not having that surgery and things. And 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 it and it the whole concept just kind of appeals to me, of becoming a, more masculine but remain retaining a certain level of femininity as well, um, so that I really would be a lot more by gender uh, in in many ways. I wouldn't be necessarily androgynous, although to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't mind being more androgynous as well. Um, I'm, one of the things I would really kind of hope for with the testosterone is that I lose some of my curviness. <laughs> I, I, I'm very, very curvy and I've never liked being curvy. I've always envied um, both men and women who, who are, have a, a straighter figure. And things, and and I just I'm just ridiculously curvy. Um, my thighs have been the bane of my existence since I hit puberty. Um, hate them, and it doesn't matter how um, how much I weigh, uh, whether I weigh 120 pounds or whether I weigh 190 pounds. My thighs are always wider than my hips, and that has bothered me to no end. So getting fat redistribution, which is one thing that the testosterone can do, there's no guarantee. Um, that it, 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 there's no guarantee that that's, that's necessarily going to happen, but um, some fat redistribution will happen. Uh, it may not be as much as I'd like it to, but there, there is a, a chance of that happening. And so that's, that's part of the appeal to, do, to doing it as well, is to maybe get closer to the body shape that I would really like to have. Uh, so I think one of the reasons why I get frustrated with exercise is it doesn't matter how much I exercise and how much weight I lose. I always have the stupid curvy body that I hate, um, and so if I have if it if I have any kind of dysphoria at all, it's just over the shape of my body um, and everything. 
I, I, yeah, I, I look at other other women and, and they're, you know, well, it's gender, but they, they have a much thinner, not, not thinner, but um, straighter um, form and, and more symmetric um, and everything. So I, it just, I don't like being curvy. I, I have nothing against women who are curvy, okay? This is not to say that, that being curvy is bad. I don't like it on myself, is what I'm saying. I've never liked it on myself. I, in my, in my mind's eye, I have a more androgynous form, and I look in the mirror, and I'm, I'm, I don't have that form. And I think if, if there's any dysphoria, so I don't have a gender dysphoria, but I definitely have a body dysphoria, um, and, and I hate the shape of my body. I always have. So. Um, anyway, that is kind of where I'm thinking of going with my, uh, with, with any kind of transition. Um, I'm not going to do anything until I know I can afford it. I'm, my insurance is changing again for next year. And, um, I, I, my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to my OBGYN when I have my annual exam and talk to her first and see if she has anyone she can refer me to, um, kind of think about next steps and that kind of thing. You know, how would I, because I think the first step would be to go on testosterone and then the second step after that would be to start thinking about which surgeries to have and when and, and things of that nature. But I'm not gonna do any of it until I know I can afford it. And right now, I probably couldn't afford it. So I, you know, don't, don't expect me to start, um, you know, having a, a um, count down on days on, on tea and all that stuff anytime soon because I'm going to wait until I know I can afford it and not um, dig myself into debt to do it. So for right now, it's a pipe dream until, until I, like if I sell a novel or something else like that. So we'll see. <laughs> Um, but anyway, thanks for, for watching this, and if you have any questions about anything I talked about, you know, feel free to leave comments below, ask me questions. Um, I'm more than happy to, to enter into a dialogue with any of you. So, alright, till tomorrow, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>